I'm just saying this to reflect on it, ask you to believe it, but it, it changes <clears throat> the way, you know, your way of looking at things. And because so much of meditation is we're doing it from a reach all the time, trying to attain or get or become, trying to become an arahant, trying to get rid of our defilements. I mean, it's still based on this sense of I'm somebody who wants some, who's got to be somebody else like an arahant, or I've got to get rid of these bad habits and calaces, defilements, in order to get what I want. And, I mean. It, so like the first better the first better, you know, is uh Sakya Diti. And that that really you know, which is the uh, ego and and Sakya Diti, you know, like the the first three fetters are all human-made fetters. You know, it's the biggest stream entry, like uh, Sotapanna, if you really look at that structure, the first three, there's ten fetters, and the first three are all made up by human beings. So like Sakya Ditti, Thilabhata Brahma, Samichi Kicha, you know, these are not Kamachat fetters. These are, uh, you know, human, we, we make them up, our cultures, you know, our sense of our personality uh, and our identity and, uh, and our social conventions, our cultural conditioning and our thinking process. It's all acquired after you're born through conditioning you, through your, your parents and your culture. And then your language. So then you you see you can see the ego forms on this sense of um, I am this body. I am a, a male. I'm a man. I'm a, an American. And I'm a this and that. And all these things. That, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with these. But we tend to make these our re, our real identity. We want to know who we are, where we belong, what nationality, what, whether we're good or bad, or people like us or don't. Or you know, it's all about me as a as a separate entity in a universe that is vast. You know, so you never know, gaze up at the night sky and been awed by the, the you know the vastness of looking into the Milky Way or the stars and what is it all about? You know, here I'm just this very vulnerable creature, you know, like a flea. And and yet I can I can see the sun and moon, I can see the stars. But I don't know where they are. I mean I don't know what that's all about. And my life as a flea is like this, you know, survival. <laughs> and and I don't know what, you know, what the, where to get my next, uh, you know, meal. Find a nice dog to jump on. <laughs> but that's pretty much what we're, we're here, we're survivors, we're ma mammals that learn how to survive on that level. But then, then, then and so we're not that much different from animals, you know, we're not, we're mammals, we the same procreative needs, procreative species, we get angry because, we, you know, that's a mechanism for survival, anger. And uh, fear, there's a lot to fear in this realm, you know, because you, you, you're, you're, in, you're in a very vulnerable form, human form, and they're easily damaged. And, and you can be damaged physically and mentally. So this is this realm is like this, and then they through uh, you know the Buddha is pointing us to look at this, understand this realm is like this. So you know you know you know you're not 
saying anything wrong with it, but you're looking at it in terms of, of its characteristic of arising and ceasing, all of it. Like the five kind is all about rising and ceasing. And uh, Sathya Sankara and each other, all conditions are impermanent. <laughs> There's no self. And so you, and, but then what, what can you know is a, in a, in not through grasping Buddhist teaching, but through practicing, putting it to a test, that all conditions are impermanent. And that means everything, everything is impermanent, except this awareness, knowing, that puts us into the Nibbana, or the Amatadhamma, or the uh, Amaravati, or the immortal reality. You know, it, it, so we we can tune into that through awareness. Otherwise, we're just very limited forever and found into conditioning, our conditioning, and, and identity with our body and with survival, need to survive, and procreate the species. I mean, that's, that's what we're limited to. And uh, the wonder of the teaching, of the Buddhist teaching, is it points to a way to not get rid of it, but to transcend it, to see it in the perspective. And that's what happens if you, you, know, if you practice with it. You, you actually see conditions. You, 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 you don't have to... It's not about conditioned phenomena, phenomena and its quality of being good or bad. It's about conditioned phenomena is impermanent. And you see what he's saying is, I don't to know this. Just to face on Garani Chah. Not through because the Buddha said it, you know, like grasping some teaching, but it's something you can prove through awareness and through investigation. So, you know, you've got the itipadas, the four itipadas, and, uh, and the Latin, like Jitta Vimangsa, the last two are about investigating, getting to the source. Uh, the monks are getting right into, you know, getting beyond just the, the, the limitation of thinking and, um, and letting go of, of what you're attached to, recognizing the suffering that you create through attachment to conditions. And uh, this you can, but you have to prove it in your mind. You know, you can What I'm saying now just can be even misleading because it, you know, one can understand the words, but I mean it more as an encouragement to be brave, investigate things, not just go along, you know, with the idea of if I practice hard now, I'll be rewarded in the future. I mean, not that that's wrong, but uh, that attachment to these views, we create those views. And then we, then a lot of us, we practice from those viewpoints. And, you know, in, in UK, where I live so long, was you meet people who have been practicing Buddhist meditation for 20, 30 years. And, you know, they were you know, intelligent people and determined they had many fine qualities, but they, they, hadn't, they hadn't seen the first factor yet. They were operating the idea if you sit so many hours and do this technique, you'll become enlightened. But the basic problem is, I have to do this technique to become enlightened. If that's a, that's maybe an assumption or a creation that you you start from. But if you're really uh, aware, you begin to see the self. You know, you have to think to become a person. I have to, you know, Kanti Dhammo is. You have to think I'm Kanti Dhammo to become Kanti Dhammo. Where, you know, we assume you're always country dumb, you know, and that's a, a convenience of communication on the worldly plane. But actually, you're not all the time. That's when the conditions for that arise and you become country dumb. And, 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 you know, like at Amaravati, I used to question and say, when, when I'm asleep in my kuti, you know, 
there's no other tomato anymore. And then when I wake up and somebody says, Ajahn Sumaita, then I become Ajahn Sumaita. So you're kind of seeing what you're doing, you know, you you become things through the conventional realm. You know, you become a senior, a junior monk, you become an Ajahn, you become a Jalkun, you become a Upachar, you become somebody uh, good or somebody not very good. Or And so we're always creating these things. That I, and seeing these things as the real world, rather than seeing in terms of Dhamma. Whatever you think or feel, whatever the conditions are, they are conditions to pay Sankarani Cha. And the knowing of conditions, like when you, when you stop trying to make conditions into something more than what it is, and you're just aware of feeling this is like this, you're letting it go, you're letting the condition go, you're letting it be what it is. And then you can actually objectively observe Sate Sankarani Cha as it really happens. It's no longer theoretical or doctrinal. And then when conditions, when you let go of conditions, then you experience Niroda or cessation. And, and that doesn't mean you go unconscious. <laughs> so consciousness is still there in cessation, but it's a sense, uh, sensory. You're not attached to consciousness through through uh, sense experience anymore. You recognize pure, pure consciousness, which is what we all have all the time. You never lose it. Even if you become a Mafia serial killer. The consciousness is the same. It's not like they have a bad consciousness. They have maybe bad conditions to deal with. So then you, you feel connected to everything. You know, you're, it's, a, it's like a, a unicity, a oneness, a wholeness that it changes our relationship to the world around us. Where when we feel this separateness, then it, you know, we have, we're, we're conditioned to maybe hate a certain group or, you know, kill the enemy and the forces of evil and whatnot because, you know, the, that's what we've been told is, is right. But in consciousness, evil belongs, same as goodness. But it's all impermanent. You know, so it's like it's like the Buddha is pointing at phenomena changing rather than than analysis. Why why do I get angry or why do I have this this fear? Why am I so frightened or why do I feel so unhappy or you know where we want to analyze ourselves and know why I feel this emotion. And because of it, maybe emotion, I think, it makes me unhappy and I don't want it. I, and, and so I, you know, you go to a psychotherapist for this why I want to, you know, I get angry easily. How can I get rid of anger? And, but in, in the way it was teaching is, isn't about analysis or narrative, it's about observing the nature of phenomena. And then you, you're actually putting yourself in touch with that ultimate, with the pure mind, the pure jitta. And, and then you have perspective on the phenomena that you're experiencing, whether it's subtle or coarse, good or bad. But you're not judging it like this. It's not about trying to get rid of the evil thoughts or the desires and bad habits, it's about observing that bad habits or whatever there in the present is, if you accept it and let it be what it is, you'll see it changing and, and it takes you to Niroda, to cessation. All can phenomena take you to cessation if you, if you allow it. But we tend to 
be so highly conditioned, we, we are always trying to manipulate conditioned phenomena to make us feel good or, or because of idealism or something that we have, we're, we're attached to. Then that unborn, uncreated, unformed, is that God? You can call it God or the ultimate self. It doesn't, it words don't really matter that much anymore. But this particular form, like Pali Buddhism, the, the Buddha you know, totally refrained from personifying the unborn, uncreated. This is, this is what I found so fascinating because um, you can't make an image in your mind, you can't imagine unborn, uncreated, unformed, unconditioned. All you can do is negate form conditions and so forth. Unborn. Born. The born is when the born dies. Unborn. You just negate the born. Uh, and that's the best we can do. You know, that, well, then we say there's an ultimate reality, and we think it's, it's way up there, you know. Uh, that we have to get and uh, get get it somehow, uh, rather than just operating from what you experiencing in the present, like dukkha, physical discomfort, mental anguish, or whatever you're experiencing in this moment, rather than trying to decide whether there's a god or not, <laughs> and you can. You know, you can actually observe dukkha wherever you are. And then it's not to, to you know, dukkha is impermanent, it's not ultimate reality, but it's a noble truth. And so, you know, the Buddha takes something none of us want. You know, nobody wants suffering. None of us want to suffer and make it a noble truth, rather than a nasty fact of life. I mean, before, you know, I thought Dukkha is a nasty fact of life. And I remember as a child, I mean, if I were God, I, would, I wouldn't I uh, would create suffering. <laughs> well, pain, physical pain. Uh, 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 you know, if I were God, I'd just create, you know, things that were eternally beautiful and happy. That's like a child's mind. Why did God, if God created anything, why did he create the devil? Why did he create pain and sickness and old age and all the things we don't like, we don't want? And uh, this is the mind of a skeptic. skeptic. But uh, why, you know, is another word. But in, in uh, this type of Buddha teaching, it's about the way things are, not about how it should be, about how we can imagine a utopian, you can create a utopia, you know, a kind of realm of all this beautiful and fair and just and good and everybody's young and everybody loves each other. We can create images like this with our mind, you know, which are very, can be very inspiring. But that's not the way it is. The way it is is, all, is, is inexorable changingness. You know, they're always moving, sitting, standing, walking, lying down, breathing, in, inhaling, exhaling, and then, you know, feeling uh, vigorous and feeling weak and tired. And, you know, we have to eat and we have to defecate and we have to. We get old and die. We have to experience loss of parents. You know, parents, seeing parents get old and feeble and dying. And people we love, you know, in your mind age, you've seen so many loved ones die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. It's no longer when I was a child. I didn't, you know. My, my grandmother died when I was about 24. But until then, um, the first experience was 
uh, with grief as a child was with a, with a cat I was very attached to died you know what I loved died and I felt this incredible grief mm. and then why does he why did my cat have to die and that kind of thing where where do cats go when they die if they're good cats <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, this is uh, you know this is the problem of thinking which is you know what happens when you die and do you go to heaven or hell or be reborn as something none of us know now, physically we're still you know we'll know when the body's dying <laughs> but but if you investigate this to see all conditioned phenomena from awareness, not with judgment or preference, then that doesn't die. That kind of conscious, expansive consciousness is not about birth and death anymore. So then the, the fear of dying goes away. Because, you know, we all, you know, if you're attached to your body, then, then you're afraid of death. Because your body's going to die, whether you, no matter what you, no matter how hard you try to preserve it. <laughs>